Ocean Maniacs. Back in the day when I was a kid, much like many other kids my age, I often wondered how to get some sweet glass shatter patterns in Cinema 40. So put on some glass proof gloves and let's dive headfirst into this. Right, so here I have a scene in Cinema 4D with a bullet flying through a pane of glass. And the idea is that this glass is supposed to shatter. And to do that, I will start off in Photoshop, actually. And I'm going to draw a pattern similar to this. Shattered glass, especially from high velocity projectiles, usually has a shape similar to uh, that of a spider's web. Got those radial cracks and then concentric rings around that. So I'm going to just start with a sharp brush and just uh, doodling some of those. And at the end of it, that leaves us with something like this. Just a nice pattern with thin lines, um, which look the way I'd like the glass to crack. Right now they're probably a bit too fuzzy, so I'm going to copy that layer and ironically enough, add a Gaussian blur to that. I'll just enter really low value because I want to preserve the detail. And then to sharpen that up, I will add a levels adjustment to it and really bring up the low lights and the highlights. And now we have a bit of a sharper image, which is uh, going to be easier for Cinema 4D to uh, interpret. So I'll save this out as a JPEG and then I will see you in Cinema 4D. Now it's time to do magic. I will create a vectorizer which basically takes any image in this case a drawn pattern and just turns that into vector shapes in cinema 4d and what that means is that we will instantly have our doodle pattern in cinema 4d so we can do some stuff with it and if we have a look a bit closer i think the first stuff i would like to do with it is increase the detail a bit so I'll turn down the tolerance value to something like 1 and that adds a bit more detail. But I still want it fast to work with so I will turn up the angle so it's uh, got fewer points on the splines. Now we get these higher detail, more sharp bits in here. And the next step is to turn those three dimensional. So I will add those into an extrude object. Boom! Three dimensions. It's a bit too thick. I'll turn that down. You can kind of see how easy it is just to draw whatever pattern you want and bring that into Cinema 4D. You could probably even Google an image and use that. I haven't actually tried that myself, but that might work. Let's start setting up some dynamics. I'll make sure the extrude object turns into just one single object, because that's important for a next step where we add a fracture object and set that to explode segments and connect so that the dynamics are going to treat these all as individual pieces. And also in preparation, I will rename the uh, Fracture object to Dynamics. And then just add a Dynamics tag to it. Go Simulation and Rigid Body. And with that on, we can just play it through. And then we see that it's perfect. All the glass drops down at once and then the uh, bullet comes flying through. Excellent. Actually, there are a few more things we could do. I'll go into the uh, collision tab on the dynamics tag, make sure it treats all these as individual objects, and that's one step in the right direction. But I also don't want them to fall down at the start, I want them to fall down when the bullet hits. So I'll go into the dynamics, set the uh, trigger to on collision, and turn down the threshold for that. So now the bullet's going to hit, and then the glass that's collided with will uh, fall down. Some of the glass completely avoids collisions, so I will keyframe the trigger as well. Somewhere around frame 40 is when the bullet hits. So I'll go a few frames forward from that and set a keyframe on the trigger. Actually, I probably want that keyframe one frame earlier. And then jump frame forward and switch that to immediately. Playing that through, we'll see that it looks... Um, let's just play it again. It looks a little bit better in a way, but I can't help but shake the feeling that the glass is moving a little bit too quickly in comparison to the bullet itself. I don't know if you agree, but I think we need to make this simulate in slow motion. So I'm going to hit Command D and go into my project settings, click on the Dynamics tab and turn down the timescale to just 10%. That will make it look more slow-mo. That's a lot better, but all these glass bits are acting a right fool now, so we're going to have to chill those out. 
I'll just turn down the gravity a bit before I go. Then I'll hop back into the dynamics tag, where I shall turn down the size increment to minus 0.5, which is going to make sure that the bits don't collide as much with each other. And as you can see, they're a lot more chill now. But I also don't want all of them to fly out of the frame. And to do that, I will select the fracture object and go into MoGraph, grab myself the MoGraph selection tool, and just go around the outermost bits and select those. And this automatically creates for us a MoGraph selection tag on the fracture object. I'll keep that selection tag selected together with the fracture object. And then I will go back up in the MoGraph tab and create myself a planar vector. And if I turn down the scale for that to minus one, that will get rid of the utmost bit. But now to get those back in, which I do want, I will create a copy of the fracture object and name that static. And I'll select the selection tag and simply invert that. So now we have two different fracture objects, one for our outer static bits and then a separate one for our inner dynamic bits. All that's left to do is go into the rigid body tag of the static ones and turn dynamic to be off. I'll also turn off the uh, animation track for the trigger on this because that doesn't matter unless they're dynamic. So now when we play that through, we can see that the outer bits don't fly everywhere, it's just the inner bits that are affected by dynamics. It's still acting up a bit though, so I'll go into the dynamics tag on the static bits where I will turn down the size increment to negative one. But what's really going to make this work better is when I change the shape itself to static mesh, which just means it's higher quality by simulating every polygon. So now you can see that it looks a bit more uh, plausible. But it doesn't look all that exciting yet. First things first though, I'll tidy up my workspace, I'll create a new null object where I can put all the glass, so I'll name that glass, probably switch up my display mode for the next step so I can see a bit better what's going on, chuck all the glass in the null, and to that null I'll apply the pre-made glass material I've got in the scene. So we'll play it through until the bullet hits, and right then I'll stop to do a quick test render, and we'll see that it looks alright. But I'm going to do some more magic to this, starting with duplicating the glass material and click drag that. And then to the copy of that, I'm going to apply a simple bump map using my favorite noise, which is the Luca noise. Make that slightly less detailed, turn on the octaves and just really increase the intensity and strength of it. And over in Reflectance, I'm going to turn the reflection strength up to over 100%. I'm going to turn that to 200%, so this material is really going to glitter. Now here's kind of the magic bit, so pay attention. In the extrude object that we used earlier, there are selection tags built in, which is really useful. So if I apply the material here and enter the selection, say, C1, that will apply that material to cap one of the extrude object. So I'll make a copy and enter C2 to that, and that applies those materials to the different caps. In our case, that's the front and back of the glass. Now it does have selection tags for the roundings as well, called R1 and R2, uh, but it doesn't have them for the sides, but that's not a problem. We'll just apply our freshly made bumpy glass material below those two other materials on the object. Drag that to the left of those. So now that's only visible on the sides. So I'll copy all those materials, add it to the uh, static bits as well. And if I then make a quick render, we can see it looks a bit more like glass because it has those rough sides. And personally, I think it just looks so much better like this because I don't think any shattered glass has ever had perfectly smooth surface. And let's move in a bit closer and make a second test render. We can just see a bit better what it looks like. But now I think we could add some extra effort into the uh, the way the glass shatters. I'd like to mold the explosion a bit more so it's more, well, explosive right now. It just kind of falls down. So to do that, I'll simply use one of the built-in particle effects. I'll use the attractor object and use that with a spherical faller. And I'll shuffle that to slightly behind the glass and shape the fall offs just so it affects it mostly in the middle but still covers the entire shattering area 
I'll also turn up the fall off to make sure the center is affected the most and create a rather sharp curve here in the spline. Then set the strength to something negative insane. I'm gonna go with 6,000. And if we play that through, it now looks a bit something like this. All the bits of glass in the center really shoot out. Kinda what I imagine it would look like. Let's just look through one more time. Maybe you'll agree with me when I say that it still looks kind of plain. It looks a bit symmetrical. So I want these glass bits all to kind of tumble around a bit. So in the dynamics, I'm going to turn on custom initial velocity and set the rotation to a reasonably random value. So now when we play that through, those bits of glass should all kind of tumble around. That's better. But the attractor is now on for way too long. I really just wanted to give an initial blast when the bullet first hits. So I'm going to set that value and go in and set a keyframe for that. And then have it fade out over just a few frames. And to zero. So now the bullet hits. And boom. Well, it kind of boom. I actually want that still a bit stronger. So I'll go back into the attractor and set the first keyframe to be minus 10,000. So now as I play that back, that's a bit more of a boom. And I think I'll be able to sleep tonight knowing it looks like that. And now I can get on with doing some particles for this. You can't have glass shattering without particles flying fucking everywhere. So I shall pause this at a good time and then select the dynamic fracture object and turn that current state to object. So now I have these bits frozen in time that I can then go through and select one by one. Uh, let me just hide a few of these things first. They're a bit in the way. There we go. Now I can go through and select some of these bits, which I will then use as particles. First of all, I'll have to go through and deselect all the crap I accidentally selected. Like my HDRI and the bullet spline. All right. Then I'm going to hit Alt G to just group those selected bits. And if I unfold this, I just need to scroll down until I find the newly created null and cut that out. I can delete all of these bits and then paste it back in. And then we got and then we got all these bits we selected. And I will just zero out the position of those and also the rotation. Then I can go ahead and create the emitter that we're going to use for the particles. So I'll drag the particles into that and out of the null object, get rid of the null. So when I play that through, we will see that the particles are actually all flying the wrong way. Also, they're being affected by the attractor object we made earlier. So I'm going to go into the forces tab of the emitter and make sure it's only affected by included forces, such as maybe a gravity force that I'll create right now and drag into the included list. So now we have gravity and we also have far too much of it. So I'll turn that down to 10 and also make sure the dynamic glass isn't affected by the gravity. So I'll drag that into the excluded list. Those particles have probably been going the wrong way for uh, about enough time now. So let's spin that emitter around. So now that they're going that way, we can also make sure that the particles are only emitting while the bullet is a hitting. Right about frame 41 to 43. Now it's just going to shoot a quick burst of, well, a single particle. Let's turn on show objects and now it'll shoot a quick burst of just one bit of glass, I reckon. And let's make that one spin around. So we have ourselves a sweet bit of glass, but I'd like a few more sweet bits of glass. I'll turn up the birth rate somewhere around the thousands. So that when the bullet strikes, we will have loads of particles flying out. But we do need more variation, so I'll turn up the randomness of the speed, but also turn the speed a bit down, because right now they're moving quicker than the bullet, which doesn't seem reasonable to me. It's not too bad, but I'll just turn that down to 100. Give it a playthrough, and it doesn't look too bad. These particles I actually just want in the center of the impact. I'm going to go into the emitter and turn the overall size down of that. 
just so they're coming from the center. And as well as that, the particles themselves are too big, so I'm going to turn those down in scale as well. 0.6 is probably good. And as we can see when we're this close, the particles look a bit rounded because of the fong tags. So I'm just gonna go through and delete those. I'm also going to select the fong tags of the extrude objects, and turn that down, just to make sure our glass is all sharp and crisp. So now I believe it's time to add the rough glass material to our particles. And to prevent pandemonium, I'm going to rename it to narrow, because these are gonna be the narrow particles. I can make a copy of that, which I will call wide. And that emitter, I'm going to scale up so it shoots particles over a wider area. I would also like those particles to spread out a bit more. If we give that a playthrough, what do we have? This is what we have. The wider particles should probably move a bit slower because they're not exposed to as much kinetic energy as the narrow ones. While I have it selected, I'll make a copy of it. Rotate it around, just for variation. Scale it down. As well as have the particles spread out a bit more. Once I've done that, I'm going to also slow those particles down. I want those to move even slower. And I want the particles themselves to be a lot smaller. 0.2 even. In fact, I'm going to rename this entire emitter Tiny. Then I'll turn the birth rate up as well, to get more tiny particles. But with that many particles, it seems to be running a bit slow. So I'm going to select my measures and check the tick box for render instances. That's a lot nicer to work with. Now I do think I want the tiny particles to move a little bit quicker, and the wide particles to move a little bit slower. I also think I'm going to make a copy of the tiny particles to make some narrow tiny particles. And that is what I'll name the emitter as well. So for that, I'm gonna spin it around a little bit and then scale the emitter down because I just want these tiny particles to be in the center. So if we spin around a bit, we can uh, check it out and see what we have. Maybe give it a render to have a closer look. And uh, that's what it looks like. So for a final thing we need to do, we need to make sure that the uh, shattered glass is not visible before the bullet hits, because that doesn't make any damn sense. So I'm going to go to the point where the bullet strikes, and let's add all these particles to the glass null as well, and then add a display tag to that null object. I'll activate the visibility parameter, and set a keyframe for that at 0%. Jump forward one frame, turn it up to 100% and set another keyframe. I've already got the uh, simple pane of glass being deactivated at that point. So now it basically just gets swapped out and it looks like it cracks. Now all that's left is basically to just render this out and do a comping job with it. I might add some extra particles of metal from the bullet and uh, maybe do a smoke sim. Who's to tell? The sky's the limit. These are just the basics of it and I hope you use them well. But for now, thank you for your time, and until next time, I do hope you stay in motion. Maestro. Maestro.